uh, back up a little bit from the camera. It was Tuesday. She was demon possessed. I was wearing this suit. We we're at the Dollar Tree and there was ice cream everywhere. Let's get to the show. So this is a story of what happens when um, Christians actually engage and they are not afraid to go up to homeless people and people who are mentally ill because this is what Jesus is doing in the earth right now. He is pouring out his spirit unto all flesh. So it's Tuesday. How do I know that was Tuesday? I don't remember. But... <laughs> But this is how my Tuesday usually shape up. It's either involving evangelism, deliverance, healing, or casting out demons. This is a Tuesday for a regular believer filled with the Holy Ghost, moving in power. <laughs> but I was hanging out at God's company, the Dollar Tree. <laughs> and I was at the Dollar Tree to get some $1 Bibles. That's where I give all my... <laughs> That's where I get all my Bibles to give them away. And outside of the Dollar Tree, there was a woman, and I promise you, she was tormented by a demon because number one, she was screaming, she was grabbing her head, and um, she was just crying so much. And I just had just a lot of compassion on her because seeing someone that tormented, it just moved me and I was really saddened um, by it. But in short, I was just like, that's not right. <laughs> Oh, but this is the cool part, right? She found the right one that day because I had been watching deliverance videos on YouTube all that week. And I was watching It's Supernatural by David Adams. And you should check out David Adams. You should check out Vlad. You should also um, check out Isaiah Salvador because they are the best when it comes to deliverance ministry and teaching all that stuff, right? I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I was trying to avoid her because I, you know, I ain't going to lie to y'all. I didn't want to be engaged. I didn't want to be bothered because it's like, yo, I want to live my life. And it's selfish. That's not what Jesus wants to do. But um, this is what we are called to. We're called to die to ourselves, and we're called to be intercessors. Like the Lord, the Lord wants people who will worship him in spirit and truth and will obey him and do what he says. So I'm like, Lord, I already know what we about to do. <laughs> I said, let it be quick because I already seen what deliverance looks like. I mean, man, this is going to take a long time, but it may not take a lot of time, but that's what happened, right? And I ain't going to lie. Um, the YouTube videos made deliverance look real easy. So I was like, now it's my chance. <laughs> it was like an action movie, right? Uh, but Jesus is a star. We're only the co-actors all the time. Until suddenly, this is a cool part, right? Um, I'm walking. I'm about to go towards her. There is a stray runaway cart. I don't know if y'all call it a cart or a buggy, but um, this old lady had her cart at her car and it was running away. And so I had jumped into action like a Marvel superhero, caught that thing like a gazelle. Um... And I gave it to the lady, right? And I ain't gonna lie, I was still trying to avoid how I'm doing it and not listening to the Holy Spirit. So I actually went shopping first and I got my deals and my savings and all, <laughs> all my little uh, groceries in my hand and lay still there um, convulsing, doing weird stuff as I'm coming out of the store. And I put my um, bags in the car. I'm like, okay. We're about to engage. <laughs> We're about to do this. It's, it's all about to go down. But I go back out. Um, she's crying. She's convulsing. She's grabbing her head and she's yelling. And <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. This, this is like side important, not like real important. But I had a really nice suit on and she had like ice cream all over her. And so I was like, man, if I start like doing deliverance, she's gonna throw her ice cream on me. I didn't want to get dirty <laughs> because I'm selfish. <laughs> But God said she was going to get free that day. So she was going to get free. Oh, so this next part is just a lesson for everyone that's like, yo, I don't want to do deliverance. I don't want to engage with people because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm telling you all the whole time I was doing it. I did not know what I was doing. <laughs> but um, I was being led by the Holy Spirit. So this is what the Bible says. The Bible says, um, if you are a Christian, you are his sheep. 
If you are his sheep, you hear his voice and you will hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. He'll lead you into all truth. So if you don't know what you're doing, the Holy Spirit will still help you out. <laughs> and this is just a side note, side note. I'm telling you right now, everything I did that day, I did a lot of stuff wrong that day. <laughs> but even when I was doing stuff wrong, God is sovereign. And so that's why you don't have to be afraid of any goose or ghouls or demons or devils or whatever. Because God won't let anything bad happen to you. He has all power. All power has come into Christ Jesus. So number one, Winston doesn't know what <laughs> he is doing. The main mistake I did is you can't talk to no demon. <laughs> I tried to talk to this demon and give the demon the gospel as if the lady was cognizant and she was sober. Um, she was not sober. And so if you could picture this, um, <laughs> I'm trying to go through the spiel. Jesus loves you, uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ, all this stuff that you will understand in your own logic. Ain't none of that worked. <laughs> so just imagine this lady just weeping and crying and yelling at me to go away. And then I'm just like over her. And people are walking by. There's a gym right next door to the Dollar Tree. And I was like, man, this is a scene. <laughs> but what the interesting what thing was is that she was coming in and out of consciousness, or I would say more sobriety. And she was like yelling at me, but then she would apologize for yelling at me. So the thing that was in her, the demon, would like have rule and have control, and then she would have rule and have control. I was like, man, like it was just so heartbreaking to see a woman like that demonized and um, that tormented that she didn't have like peace or anything. It was almost like uh, multiple multiple personality disorder or like schizophrenia. And I was like, man, uh, this is not right. And I just wanna tell y'all how crazy this thing looks. It looks so crazy because I'm sitting over her and she's like bribing me with ice cream to like go away. <laughs> and this is like Tuesday, I was like, man, I look wild, but you know, you have to be radical for the gospel of Jesus. So my apostle, uh, Apostle Chica Nuzo at Resurrection House for All Nations, he says like, yo, anything that's not working in your life, just start speaking in tongues, right? So I start praying in tongues. I want y'all <laughs> to picture all this in your mind's eye, in your, ima in your imagination. I am in a full green suit, praying in tongues over a woman that is covered in ice cream, kneeling down, crying and yelling. <laughs> but, but this is the cool part. This is where everything shifted and everything started to change, right? Because as I'm speaking in tongues and um, I'm praying, she actually gets way more quiet and way more sober and she starts um, confessing. So I don't know what this is, um, but every time I encounter a non-believer and just know that praying in tongues is for the non-believer, which is in 1 Corinthians 14, uh, these people just start confessing things. So even if they're um, demons possessed or not demon possessed, um, if you're a sinner, you <laughs> usually have something in you. Um, but they start confessing. So what it sounded like to me, because, you know, she's coming in and out of sobriety, is that she was encountering either like, it was some church, she used to be Christian, and they made her get an abortion. It was like a Methodist church or like a Catholic church. And she was just dealing with like the condemnation and the fear and the guilt of having an abortion. And that was like tormenting her. And also, y'all should look up the studies about women who have uh, trauma, um, suicidal thoughts, and all this post-traumatic stress disorder after their um, abortion. So that's not even natural if we're talking about spiritual or non-spiritual, right? And so I'm like, wow, um, this stuff is working. <laughs> so again, this stuff of, hey, Winston is being led by the Holy Spirit, but sometimes he be doing his own thing and be messing it up. So I'm, I'm just preaching um, the Bible. I'm preaching the word of God about like, no, um, all our sins are forgiven. They're thrown into the sea for forgetfulness, right? And the whole time all of this is happening, she is never looking me in my eye, right? And so I ain't gonna lie to you. Um, we hit this point where I'm getting frustrated. I'm getting angry and because the stuff ain't working um, the way I think it would work because I haven't done deliverance that often to know like, man, every deliverance looks radical. It looks different. It's a wild, it, it is a rodeo. <laughs> and so um, as we're going, uh, she starts to like run off and leave. And I ain't gonna lie, I got angry. I got frustrated and I just yelled, stop. 
<laughs> and so if y'all can picture, we're on the sidewalk. There's a parking lot um, with a road and there's a pillar behind me. And as, um, as she's walking behind the pillar and I yell, stop, this lady's whole body locked up like a robot. And she stopped in the middle of the street. And I was like, yo, it worked. <laughs> it was the wildest thing. I ain't gonna lie. I was hyped because, you know, you're reading the Bible about in Acts where those people try to cast out a demon and they got beat up. It's like, yo, all this Bible stuff and this Jesus stuff actually worked. And the demon listened to me. I was like, yo, that's cool. Right. And so um, I'm on the sidewalk. She's in the middle of the road. I didn't want her to get hit in the middle of the road. So I say to her, um, get out the road. And as she's um, getting out the road, she's not walking like a usual human would turn around and walk. I'm going to show y'all exactly how she was walking. It was weird. So imagine this. Running off. Stop. Locked up. Get out the road. It was the wildest thing I ever encountered in my life. It was like the thing that was controlling her, the demon, was walking. And it was just being under the authority of like, yo, you have power in the name of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So the thing in her was like walking backwards. I'm like, yo, this is the most wild thing I've ever seen in my life. Like <laughs> all the stuff that you read in your Bible actually happened in real life. I was like, yo, <laughs> it was wild. So just letting y'all know, this, this next part is a little viewer discretion advised because um, the best thing I can describe it as was like Men in Black number one. If y'all ever seen the villain in Men in Black 1, it's like this alien roach creature, but it's wearing like human skin, right? So the lady is out of the road, out of the parking lot, and she's on the sidewalk, and um, she's never looking at me in my eye again. <clears throat> if you ever watch it, it looks like the alien guy is wearing like human skin. So the lady, she's never looking at me. She's like mm -hmm. looking like this way towards me, right? Mm -hmm. And so... The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit told me to tell her to look me in my eye. She never looked me in my eye. And also, I didn't do it. I don't know why, because I'm disobedient. But if you're doing anything, um, being spirit-led, you got to obey the Holy Spirit, like, all the way. You can't half-heartedly um, obey him. And so I'm looking um, at her, and this thing on the inside of her smiled at me. And I don't know how to describe it, but it looked as if someone was wearing a human as a mask and as skin and like a costume. And I was like, wow, that's wild. I've never seen that in my life. <laughs> like you can actually see the demon. And so again, this is my first time engaging in this sort of stuff. And so um, the Holy Spirit is telling me, tell them to look you in your eye. And I ain't gonna lie, number two of Winston <laughs> messing up because he don't know what he's doing. Uh, I started like um, giving Bible scriptures and almost like leaning on logic and apologetics because I was what I was used to. That stuff did not work. <laughs> if you're ever um, doing deliverance, you have to be led by the spirit. You can't be just doing your own thing because how can you start off in the spirit and then go into the flesh? Like Galatians says, it's like, no, those who are led by the spirit, though, live in the spirit, have to be led by the spirit. And so um, this lady, she's more calm and she's sitting down now. And I have like, I guess, more control over the situation than before. But the worst part that happened is that this car that was playing this loud Mexican mariachi music um, came by and the music was loud and it knocked everything out. I don't know what happened, but the lady ran off, right? The deliverance didn't happen. She didn't get set free. I was like, dang, that's wild, man. You got to listen to him. <laughs> and so, long story short, I'm going to say y'all this next part because it got real dumb and real ghetto real fast. But I started power walking after her, chasing her. I'm telling you right now, I never caught up with her. And I'm glad <laughs> because, again, I started in the spirit, but now I started operating in the flesh. And you can't, you can't do nothing of your own power. So even if I met her, that demon might have did something I wasn't ready for. <laughs> But um, that's what happened. Um, that's my story. And um, that's what was the encounter. But I do have like three like big lessons from this experience to like teach everybody about like 
power and deliverance and being led of the Holy Spirit and all that cool stuff, right? So this is my takeaways from deliverance. Number one, do what God tells you to do. <laughs> Everyone wants to know like, hey, how you cast out a demon, how you do deliverance or whatever. There is no formula to this stuff. There is no format. There is no nothing. Just do whatever the Holy Spirit tells you to do in the name of Jesus and just know that um, God is backing you. Um, you have all the power. You also have like all the control in this situation because you are an ambassador of Christ. Same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that lives on the inside of you. So there's no fear. All right. So number two, be bold and engaged. I'm going to tell you all right now. <laughs> if you're asking me what I feel like doing on a Tuesday, it's not casting out demons out of random homeless strangers. <laughs> but um, the Lord calls us to set the captives free and provide uh, freedom to those that are in bondage and those that are in captivity. And so when you are called um, to be a follower of Jesus, you have to submit all of your life. So you can't just turn him on when it's convenient and then turn him off when you don't feel like being bothered. Um, you have to engage and also <laughs> make sure you're living in holiness because if the demons in them <laughs> say up to their cousins with the demons in you, you're going to have a justice league of deliverance happening and you're going to get whooped up on. So make sure you're not in secret sin and you're um, not in unforgiveness, but you're living out a life of holiness so you can actually move in power. All right. And then um, number three. The biggest thing, if I were to do it all over again, um, I would have commanded the devil out of her. I don't know why, but I totally forgot that, that you could do that. And so uh, I got her out the road and I got her to sit down and be quiet. But I, I was like, oh, you can like cast out the demon and then it'll come out. And I was like, dang, I never said come out. <laughs> and it never came out. So, you know, um, all this is not like trial and error, but it's like, hey, go out into all the nations, um, baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, heal the sick, and cast out demons. This is the Great Commission in uh, Matthew 28. And so uh, as you are a believer, just know that um, we don't come in word only. We come in power and demonstration. And so worst comes to worst, um, if you do have fear or you're afraid to engage, just know that God's sovereign. A demon can't kill you. <laughs> You'll be at right. This is my prayer to you. That in the name of Jesus Christ, the spirit of the Lord is upon you to preach good tidings to the meek. For the Lord hath anointed you to bind up the brokenhearted in the name of Jesus. To proclaim liberty to the captives and deliverance and the opening of the prison to all that are bound to sin in the power of the enemy, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn to Zion, to give them beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, all those who have depression, be loose in the name of Jesus Christ that they may be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Be deluce, be delivered, be set free, and all those you encounter. But um, that's my story. Uh, thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And come back next week where I talk about <laughs> picking up people on the side of the road and them being demons possessed and cussing. <laughs>